NUI Galway Anatomy. In this clip we're going to look at the conducting portion of the respiratory system and we're going to begin by looking at part of the postpharyngeal part of the conducting portion that is looking at the uh, trachea. Here we see the lumen of the trachea through which air passes. The lining of the trachea is an epithelial lining which you can see following along the arrow here and classically this is a pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells which is also called respiratory epithelium. The giveaway feature of the trachea is the presence of respiratory epithelium overlying this material here and uh, along here which is hyaline cartilage because the trachea, the wall of the trachea is reinforced with uh, C-shaped rings of hyaline cartilage. So now very quickly uh, let's begin by taking a look first I think at the uh, epithelium of the uh, trachea and this particular slide is a thin section, a plastic section, so the cells, uh, cellular components of the epithelium will be very well uh, seen. And here, even before we get to the top magnification, we can see pretty clearly here, here are the cilia uh, on the surface of the epithelium, and these cilia belong to tall columnar cells uh, because of the pseudostratified appearance. It's not really easy to make out individual tall columnar cells. There's maybe one here. Interspersed among these tall columnar ciliated cells are these foamy looking cells here and here and here and here, very well seen here and here. And these are goblet cells, and goblet cells secrete mucus. The mucus secreted by goblet cells onto the surface of the respiratory epithelium traps microorganisms and particles, and the cilia, which belong to the ciliated cells, then sweep that mucus with the debris contained within it uh, up toward the back of the throat where it can um, initiate a cough reflex and you can spit the material out. So this is respiratory epithelium here. The epithelium rate rests on a basement membrane which isn't easy to see and then beneath that there's uh, variable amounts of connective tissue which varies from loose connective tissue to moderately dense connective tissue. If you look around the wall of the trachea you'll see a lot of small vessels like this, this one here, and this one here and occasionally you'll see uh, larger vessels and these are blood and lymphatic vessels there's a fairly rich uh, vascular plexus underlying the epithelium of the trachea and the uh, plexus helps to shed heat and warm the air which has been inspired. Another feature of the trachea which you can see in the connective tissue immediately beneath the epithelium are occasional clusters of these guys here and these are small uh, tracheal glands sometimes the clusters can be um, considerably larger than this and these glands also secrete a mucus component onto the surface uh, of the epithelium uh, you can see both secretory portions and little ducts of the glands here and if you look at these at higher magnification you'll see that the cells are filled with small eosinophilic staining uh, granules as we move outward through the wall of the trachea we then encounter this hallmark feature of the trachea or indeed large bronchi and this is the hyaline cartilage that's found in the wall which reinforces the wall of the trachea and prevents the lumen of the trachea from collapsing uh, during inspiration and uh, particularly during expiration. And then finally just outside the um, hyaline cartilage we'll see again some additional connective tissue varying from dense to uh, loose connective tissue. There's some adipose tissue present here and this connective tissue particularly on the posterior aspect of the trachea will blend with the connective tissue surrounding uh, other uh, structures and organs in the vicinity but in particular posteriorly it blends with connective tissue that covers the anterior part of the esophagus. Now we're going to take a look at a uh, slide that has some lung tissue on it and this particular slide is not taken close to the hilum of the lung but it's taken a little uh, further out. So what we can we see? On first glance we can see uh, fairly vacuous uh, looking tissue so filled with lots of air spaces and then embedded in that are some larger openings which we can see here and here. These will be either bronchi or bronchioles and then accompanying these bronchi or bronchioles and dotted elsewhere throughout the uh, lung tissue are these spaces which stain a reddish pink and this in fact is blood which has been trapped in these blood vessels and we'll see in a moment that we can tell whether these are pulmonary artery or pulmonary vein simply by looking at the wall structure. So the first thing we're going to look at is some of these larger air tubes here, part of the conducting portion 
of the uh, respiratory system. And the general rule we're going to apply is that if there is cartilage, even the smallest amount of cartilage present in the walls of these structures, we'll call them bronchi, and otherwise we'll refer to them as bronchioles. So let's begin perhaps by looking at this uh, structure here, and we'll increase in magnification. And we'll take a look and see what we can see in regard to the wall structure of the various things which are present here. So here we have a, a very large vessel, and you can see pretty clearly there's red blood cells <clears throat> clotted in the center of the vessel, and here we can see the wall thickness of the vessel, not as thick as a systemic artery would be if it had the same lumen diameter, but very clearly a wall that contains quite a lot of smooth muscle. So this is a branch of the pulmonary artery, and it's accompanying the uh, structure through which air is passing, which you can see will decrease magnification just a little to get a better view of it. So it's this structure which we can see in here. This is the lumen down along which air passes, <clears throat> and it should be immediately apparent to you that there's a little lump of hyaline cartilage right here, and there's a larger lump of hyaline cartilage right here, and in fact if we move up here, in fact what we're looking at here is a branch point where a uh, bronchus is dividing into two um, smaller bronchi. These are probably uh, segmental uh, bronchi, but we won't worry about the distinction uh, between them. So what other features can we see here that would uh, tell us uh, that these are bronchi rather than uh, other structures? Well, aside from the cartilage, which is the giveaway, we could increase in magnification a little, and we could take a look at the uh, epithelium. And here, even though we're not anywhere near the top magnification, uh, we can make out that this is pretty clearly a pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with some uh, goblet cells, although not too many here. And so this is respiratory epithelium characteristic of the conducting portion of the airway. Now, one other thing which we can see here, which again is uh, fairly typical for uh, bronchi, are these structures here. And if we increase in magnification, what we'll see is that these are uh, the ducts of some small glands. These are bronchial uh, glands. They're identical in structure to tracheal glands. They just happen to be uh, a little bit smaller. And then finally, the one other thing which we can see here in the wall are material like this. These are patches of smooth muscle that form uh, part of those spiraling bands of smooth muscle that spiral up and down along the length of the uh, bronchioles and which become, or sorry, not bronchioles, bronchi, and which become progressively more important as you move uh, further down the airway. So all in all, that was uh, pretty easy to tell what these are and uh, to decide how we're going to classify them. Let's move to a smaller uh, structure. Let's have a look at uh, this one here. And here what we can see is there's a blood-filled structure uh, just here, and it's accompanying uh, an airway structure. So this is going to be a branch of the uh, pulmonary artery. And this airway structure here, we're going to take a look and see if we can see, is there any cartilage in the wall? Even at this magnification, you would have to guess there's probably no cartilage here. And if that's the case, then what we're looking at is a bronchiole rather than a bronchus. And so as we look around the wall structure here, following around, we can see that there are or is no cartilage present in the wall here. So here we're looking at a bronchiole. We can take a look at the lining of the bronchiole. It's not evident everywhere, but if we look just along here, for example, what we'd see is that the epithelium is no longer a pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. There aren't really any ciliated cells here. Uh, in fact, it's probably a simple columnar. There might be some pseudostratification. We see some of this, sorry, not columnar, cuboidal. We see some of the cells here. And there's a population of cells, which I always find uh, difficult to spot here, called clara cells, which secrete surfactant. This is certainly one uh, right here. And these clara cells become proportionally more numerous as you move further down the airway. Here again, we can see the generally cuboidal nature of the epithelium that's lining the uh, lumen of this tube. We see it rather well here, along here. This one here is probably a clara cell, and these here are just uh, respiratory uh, epithelial cells. Now one thing we should notice about this bronchiole is that in some parts here we can see that the, the bronchiole opens into a space which is part of an alveolus. And uh, this means where you have a bronchiole that opens into or has outpouchings in its wall that are alveoli, these are called respiratory bronchioles. So the bronchiole in which we find ourselves just now 
is a respiratory uh, bronchial. So let's back out a little in magnification again. And just to revise, here we have a bronchiole, and we can see it communicates with an alveolus here, and with one here, and probably with one down here. So this is a terminal bronchiole branching to a respiratory uh, bronchiole toward its uh, end. Let's look around and see if we can find maybe one more area where we can have a look at uh, the airway and the associated blood vessels. Here we have a blood vessel, here we have a portion of the airway. This blood vessel is branching, we can see that just here, and this is going to be a branch of the <coughs> uh, pulmonary artery again. Let's look at the airway structure which we see here, and let's just uh, take a look at the wall. So as we increase in magnification, we move across here, maybe I should back out and come in a bit more slowly so you can see this. <clears throat> so <clears throat> here's the wall of this uh, structure, whatever it is. And again, we can see that there's an outpouching from the wall here. That's an alveolus. And along here, a shared part um, that um, connects with alveolar wall. So this, again, is going to be a terminal branching to respiratory uh, bronchial. Let's take a look at this just along here and see what we can see. So if we look along here, we can see that there's a very low cuboidal uh, epithelium. And here we see some smooth muscle, characteristic smooth muscle, that you find in the walls of uh, bronchioles. And in fact, if we were to back out a little in magnification again, and perhaps look somewhere down around the opposite end, we'll find the rest of that spiral of uh, smooth muscle. So again, looking just toward the end, here's a nice uh, branch of the uh, pulmonary uh, artery. This would be a pulmonary arteriole. There's only about one to two layers of uh, smooth muscle visible in the wall here. And here we see the other side of that uh, terminal slash respiratory bronchiole. And in here we see one, two, three, four, five, six maybe layers of smooth muscle forming a bundle. And this bundle spirals around the long axis of this uh, bronchiole. So the last thing then to look at in the lung slide, once you've Follow the rule that if it has cartilage, it's a bronchus, and if it doesn't have cartilage and it has a wall, it's a bronchiole. The last thing then to look at is the respiratory portion of the airway. And the respiratory portion is defined as being that portion across which gas exchange takes place. Now, part of the respiratory portion are the terminal bits, or the last bits of those respiratory bronchioles, which you've just looked at. The other structures we want to look at are alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs. And here we see an alveolar duct. It's this space here, and we can imagine air passing down this space. And then as it comes down here, eventually it moves off into these grape-like clusters of um, alveoli across the walls of which um, gas exchange is going to take place. So maybe if we zoom in just a little bit here, and we don't have to look specifically in the area of the alveolar duct, if we take a look, we can see that there's a very, very thin wall in these alveoli indeed. This is called the alveolar uh, septum. And if we increase the magnification so as to see uh, as much as we can in terms of the structure of that wall, the first thing that you might notice when you look at it is this uh, intensely red pink staining which we can see here. And these are erythrocytes. We see them along here and here, and in particular here and here. These are erythrocytes and here which are contained within the walls of capillaries which ramify throughout the alveolar wall. The alveolar wall itself is made up predominantly of uh, type 1 pneumocytes, which are uh, occupy about 97% of the surface area of the alveoli, but the cells themselves only make up about 40% of the total population uh, of cells. And the nuclei of those cells are quite similar in appearance, so for instance this one here, and are similar appearance to the uh, endothelial cell nuclei which are present. This is maybe one here. So those are type 1 pneumocytes. And interspersed among the flat squamous type 1 pneumocytes are these guys here. They're fatter and rounder cells with much larger nuclei. There's a very good one here. Often found at the interstices where the junctions between uh, two or three alveoli. And these are type 2 pneumocytes and they secrete surfactant which is the liquid material that breaks surface tension and prevents the alveoli from staying uh, glued closed, if you like, during when exhalation has occurred. 
you'll see that there's a bit more structure at some of the interstices or the junctions between the alveoli. And here again, we would be looking at perhaps some type 2 pneumocytes and also a few fibroblasts that would be found in here. And then we'll also see there are uh, patches of connective tissue as well. But the principal feature, again, as we look through the alveoli, are these red uh, um, erythrocytes, which you can see contained within the extensive network of capillaries that ramify uh, throughout the lung. The last thing that we might find in alveoli, and it depends very much on the specimen which you're looking, are another population of cells which are found not as part of the alveolus, but actually wandering around on the surface of the alveolus. And these are called free alveolar macrophage. And this is one here, it looks like. And free alveolar macrophage uh, are sometimes called dust cells if they contain uh, dust particles or carbon particles, uh, which would be uh, quite common in city dwellers, for example. Or they may be called heart failure cells. There's another free alveolar macrophage here. They may be called heart failure cells when they're characteristically seen in individuals with right heart failure. The alveolar macrophages, um, phagocytose erythrocytes, which leak from the capillaries in the lung, and they become uh, packed full of uh, erythrocytes. They become quite obvious, and in fact, you can see them as um, red streaks in sputum that's been regurgitated or spat up in, from individuals who have uh, right-sided heart failure. Here's another free alveolar macrophage again. So all in all, that about takes care of the lung. Uh, to revise uh, very quickly, if it's got cartilage in its wall, it's a bronchus. If it has a wall structure that's distinct with, but with no cartilage, it's a bronchiole. If the bronchiole has any outpouchings that form alveoli, it's a respiratory bronchiole. And below the level of the respiratory bronchiole, the structures which we can see are simply alveolar ducts, such as this, and the individual alveoli, the sacs that branch off from those uh, ducts. We can see type 1 pneumocytes, type 2 pneumocytes, and free alveolar macrophage.